Shalom Israel, Shalom, your brother Hezekiah. I want to give all honor and glory and praise to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh That's the Most High God, the God of Israel, His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. I want to give a mighty Shalom to all the mighty elders from the house of David and all the mighty elders worldwide. I want to give another mighty Shalom to all the brothers throughout the whole nation of Israel, giving their bodies as a living sacrifice, going on the highways and byways, pushing this truth. And I want to give another mighty shalom to the women and children that's keeping the commandments and the faith of Christ. Today we're going in basic laws for the women. Basic laws for the women. So we're not going to go too deep. It's for like the new beginners, the new women that's coming into the truth, that's coming into the faith, learning, learning who they truly are. The children of Israel, Israelites, from the, one of the, from the various of the 12 tribes. We're not going to go too deep. We're going to keep it real basic to start your repentance. All right. So I'm going to kick it off with the book of St. John in the New Testament. John chapter 7, verse 49, which reads, But this people who know of not the law are cursed. Right? So if you don't know the law, you won't do the law. And you will be cursed. You will be devoted for destruction. And the ones that's not keeping the commandments will not enter into the kingdom of God. So that's why it's our job as the prophets, the servants, and the most high the men is to teach our people these laws. Because if not, you will not receive the kingdom of God. You will be devoted for destruction. Death will be on your head. Right? Let me get another precept for that. This is Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter and through the gates into the city. So the Lord said, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have a right to the kingdom of God. Right. So if you do the commandments and keep the faith of Christ, you get into the kingdom. If not, you will be put to death. You will be burned in a lake of fire. Your soul and your flesh will be burnt. Right. All right, so we'll get another precept on that because everybody say that they love God, they serve God. Yes, Jesus is my friend. Yes, I talk to God every day. I have a per personal relationship. But this is what Christ said. This is the book of John, chapter 14, verse 15. That's what Christ said. If you love me, keep my commandments. I'm going to read that again. John, chapter 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. So right there is telling you that love is an action word. So if we love Christ, we love the most high God. We have to keep their commandments. All right. Let's get the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 9. 1 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 9. And it reads, And like manner also... That women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So women had to dress themselves in modest apparel. Modest means not to attract sexual attention. I know it's hard for us, the women, our, the women to receive that, to, to realize that we have, you guys have to dress yourself in modest apparel, not attracting sexual attention, not wearing tight clothing that, the leggings, the tight shorts, the pants, the sweats. Right? Read it on. With shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broader hair or gold or pearls or costly array. So it's okay, you know, to wear all the nice things, the earrings, you know, have your hair braided all nicely. Have the necklaces, that's nice. But don't put all your effort into looking good on the outside appearance. Right? And then not worrying about your spirit on the inside. Right? Read it on. But which become a woman professing godliness with good works. So that's what the women have to focus, focus on. Professing godliness, being godliness, and having good works. Along with dressing Honestly, not showing sexual attention because your body is and your curves is only for your husband and God. It's not for every man on the street, every man at your job to look at your body. 
right? That's what you're doing is attracting lustful eyes. And we know that lust with the eyes is a sin. So you're causing your neighbor to sin while you're dressing unmodestly, right? We got to remember, you females are the princesses of the Most High God. Princesses don't dress like whores, like thoughts, like prostitutes, like strippers. They dress like queens. Royalty, right? Let's get the book of Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. And it reads, The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So what pertains to a man? What do men wear every day? Pants. Yes, pants, sweats, shorts. So the Lord said, The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So a woman cannot wear pants, sweats, shorts. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. So the Lord, the Lord hates that thing. All, all women that wear pants, shorts, sweats, anything that's showing sexual attention, that's an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Right? Let's get a precept on being an abomination to the Lord thy God. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus in your Apocrypha, chapter 15, verse 13. The Lord hateth all abominations. So the Lord hates when a woman is wearing things that pertain to a man. And he hates when men wear things that pertain to a woman. That's cross-dressing. That's out of order. That's confusion. That's not godly. That's not righteous. And that's not holy. Right? And, you know, some people may say, someone may say, there, was, there wasn't no pants back in those days. Men didn't wear pants back in those days. Well, I'm sorry, sister. They did. Let's get the book of Exodus, chapter 28, verse 42. I'm going to start at verse 41. And thou shalt put them upon Aaron, thy brother, and his sons with him, and shall anoint them and consecrate them and sanctify them, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. Here's the point. And thou shalt make them linen breeches. What are linen breeches? What are linen breeches? Breeches are pants to cover their nakedness from the loins even unto the thighs they shall reach. So right there is stating that the men and the priests wear pants under their garments. All right. Let's get the book of Numbers chapter 15. Verse 38, because after we establish that the woman should dress in modest apparel by wearing dresses and long skirts, not showing too much skin, we have to put something on the border on the border of your garments, on the border of your dresses and your skirts. Okay, it's the book of Numbers, chapter 15. We're going to start at verse 37. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. So Moses commanded us to put on fringes. Right? With a ribbon of blue. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them that you seek not after your own heart and your own eyes after which you use to go a whoring verse 40 that you may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God so that's the importance of wearing fringes so you look on, on your fringes and remember the commandments on the Lord every time you're about to go off Looking, looking upon your friends it should stop you from sinning so, so you can remember the commandments right before you leave the house right sisters look at your friends just be like oh I gotta put on a dress today I can't wear pants so on and so forth oh look down on your friends oh I 
can't smoke this cigarette. I can't smoke this weed. Oh, look, I'm your friend. Just, oh, I can't look at this man with lustful eyes. All right. Moving on. Moving on to the book of First Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 5. The book of First Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 5. So after we establish that we, woman, right, we wear dresses, we wear skirts, we wear modest apparel, not showing sexual attention, right? And then we put the fringes on the borders of our dresses and our skirts, right? We have to do something else. First Corinthians 11, verse 5. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head covered, so any woman that prays, prophesieth, as in you reading your Bible, or someone is reading the Bible to you, right? With her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. So women, when we women, when you're praying, and when you're reading your Bible, or someone is reading the Bible and teaching you, you have to have your head covered. Because you dishonor your head, and your head is your head is verse three. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So the head of every man, head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. So the head of the woman is the man. Right? It could be your husband. It could be your big brother, your older uncles. Right? It could be your um, your elder. It could be the one that's teaching you these laws, statutes, commandments. And, and it also is Christ and God. Read it on. And the head of Christ is God, right? So it go, God, Christ, man, woman, and children. So if you don't cover your head while you're praying and you're prophesying, reading your Bible, or being taught the Bible, you dishonor the man, Christ, and God, okay? So make sure you women are covering your head with a scarf. You can cover your head with a scarf, uh, um, a bandana, I mean, a hoodie, whatever you got to do. Okay. Um, we're gonna get a um account where one of your fourth mothers um cover her head because she was keeping the commandments. Let's get the book of Judith chapter ten, and now uh, in your apocrypha, Judith chapter ten, verse three, and it reads, "And put off the sackcloth which she had on, and put off the garments." of her widowhood and wash her body all over with water and anointed herself with precious ointment and braided the hair of her head and put on a tire upon it. So a tire is basically a form of a scarf, a scarf, a wrap to cover her hair, her hair when she braided it because she honors her man, her husband, she honors Christ and she honors God. Reading on. And put on her garments of gladness. Wherewith she was clad during the life of Manasseh, her husband. So your former mother Judith knew that she had to cover her head. Okay? Because she didn't want to dishonor the most high God and Christ and her husband. Alright? Let's get the book of First Peter chapter 3. Verse three. So now we establish that the women wear dresses, skirts, not too tight, not too short. We put fringes on them, and we cover our head whenever we're praying, and whenever we're reading our Bible, and whenever we're being taught the Bible. All right. This is the book of First Peter, chapter three, verse three. Who? Let's talk about the women. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of planting in the hair. So you shouldn't be concerned about, too much concerned about your hair, your hairstyle, right? Your fancy hairstyles, okay? Read it on. And of wearing of gold, right? Expensive jewelry. That shouldn't be your main focus on looking beautiful, right? Or of putting on apparel. So it shouldn't be about how fancy your hair look, the expensive jewelry you got on, or the um the um beautiful, you know, garments you put on. That shouldn't be your main focus. Read it on. 
but let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even an ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price, right? Instead of worrying about you wearing, you know, clothes that make you look super beautiful or super good, right? You should be worrying about the, your spirit because that's what matters unto the most high God, right? You should be um, having the fruits of the spirit, love, gentleness, kindness, meekness, long suffering, you know, charity, you know, Re high, highly respecting, highly respecting and loving your neighbors as yourself. That should be your main focus. And then you can worry about looking um, good for your husband, you know, looking good for yourself. But make sure that your spirit is right and make sure that you're dressing yourself in modest apparel. Okay. okay, let's get the book of Zephaniah 1 and 8. Now, we may have some, some, some gainsayers on saying, oh, the Lord is not going to punish me for wearing pants. I could wear pants, but we're, we're, we're saved by the grace and the faith. He's not going to do anything to me. All right. Well, sister, I'm sorry to tell you, the Lord is a man of war. And when he says goes... It's the book of Zephaniah, chapter 1, verse 8. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. The Lord sacrifices when Christ comes back with his troops, the angels, right? That I will punish the princes, he will punish the, the men, and the king's children, the women, and all such are clothed with strange apparel. So the Lord is going to punish the men and the women that are dressed in strange apparel when he comes back. So if women are wearing pants, sweats, tight shorts, or anything that pertains to a man, he will put you to death. And any man that is wearing dresses, skirts, or anything that pertains to a woman, he will put us to death. That's the say of the Lord. That's the book of Zephaniah, chapter 1, verse 8. I'm going to read it again. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children, the women, and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. All right. All right. Let's deal with another topic. Let's get the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 4. It's the book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, in the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So women, if, if we have an unmarriable, unmarriageable sex, we have to stop it right now. Tell that brother to marry you. And don't give it up until he marry you. Because the Lord just said marriage is honorable. The Lord honors that thing. He respects that thing. He loves that thing. He praises marriage and the bed undefiled. So he's not worrying about what y'all doing. That's y'all business because y'all married. But whoremongers, those that's jumping from partner to partner, and adulterers, those the fornicators, the ones that's having unmarriageable sex, God will judge. He will judge you with STDs. He would judge you with um, breakups, right? You could be getting cheated on, and the ultimate judgment is death. All right? Let's get the book of First Timothy, chapter 5, verse 4. First Timothy, chapter 5, verse 4. And it reads, sloppy as well, bear with me. First Timothy chapter five verse fourteen. Sorry, I would therefore that the younger woman marry. Read that again. I would therefore that the younger woman marry. So the Lord just said, "I would, I would rather have you marry. You have to get married, bear children. So have children." Guide the house. He wants the woman to guide the house. Make sure it's clean. Make sure it's looking good, smelling good. Make sure it's food in the house. 
right? Make sure everything's decent and order, right? Give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully, right? For some already turn aside after Satan, all right? That's gonna keep you away from following Satan. Marriage, God in the house, right? Reverencing your husband. If you don't have a husband, stay single. Find someone that's that's of godly manners. You know, prove him and then get married. Okay? Cause some woman out in the world, they're already following Satan. You got your Cardi B's, you got your Megan Stallions, you got your gorillas, you got your sweeties, you got your you know um RB Fletchers and your Beyonce's, you know, that wickedness that they promote. You have to be an example. You have to be holy. You have to be a princess and a queen on this earth. We can't follow those wicked ways that they promote, you know, through the music, through the media. We're better than that, okay? That's following after Satan, you know? Being what the world wants you to be instead of being what the Lord wants you to be, All right? Let's get the book of Exodus chapter 22, verse 16. Because, you know, I know you women. You women, you know, could get, you know, a little, you know, you can't control yourself sometimes. You know, you find a man that you really like, then y'all lay down together. But this is the rule for that. This is Exodus chapter 22, verse 16. If a man entice a maid that is not betrothed. So if a man entice a woman that is not married, she doesn't have a boyfriend, she's not proving nobody, right? She's not engaged to anybody entice means you know this big game you know the text the call everything you know you know the talk you know and lie with her so y'all both lie with each other y'all have sex he shall surely endow her to be his wife so women if you lay down with a man have him marry you that is a law okay so let's get the book of Acts 17. We're going to wrap it up right here. Acts chapter 17, verse 30. Acts 17, verse 30. And it reads, in the times of this ignorance, God winked at, right? So before you even knew these things, the Lord winked at. You know? He wasn't worried about it. Read it on. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent but now that you know these commandments you know these laws you know what you have to do to please the lord he's he wants you to repent to acknowledge to confess your sins and to change you know now it's time to put on your dress your skirts you, to, you know work on putting your fringes on them right cover your head whenever you're praying whenever you're reading your bible whenever you've been taught the bible right if you're dealing with a man if you got a boyfriend Y'all should be getting married. No more sex until y'all get married. All right? All right? Dress modestly. All right? And work on your spirit, you know? Love your neighbor as yourself, right? Be kind. Be affectionate. Don't have a, a nasty attitude, right? Um, let's get the book of Acts chapter 3, verse 19. We're going to end it on this preset. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So before the Lord come, right, and destroys America, woman, we have to repent and we have to change our ways. It's time to be princesses and queens on this earth. Be an example for the younger woman. Okay, I want to give all honor and glory, praise to Yahweh, Hashem, Shai. You mighty woman, you stay in the spirit. Repent, pray, keep these commandments at the best of your ability. If you got any questions, you hit the email, you call us. Any questions? Okay, Shalom.